Hi everyone, welcome back to Parsha Pantry. This week we will be learning about Parshat Mishpatim, which comes from the book of Exodus starting with chapter 21. This portion begins with the words, Be'ela Mishpatim, these are the laws. And you may read through this portion and think, oh, it's just a list of law after law after law. But the portion brings us a really beautiful ethical and moral message. In Exodus chapter 22, we hear the famous words, you shall not oppress a stranger, for you know the feelings of the stranger, having yourselves been strangers in the land of Egypt. So the Torah portion teaches us instead of holding on to pain, God asks us as a people to use that source of discomfort to be a source of empathy and moral responsibility. Even though we as a Jewish people have been oppressed, we must strive never to do that to anyone else. We are starting to get ready for the holiday of Purim, and this message is really relevant to this holiday as well. For we remember the evil man Haman, boo, who tried to hurt the Jews, but the Jewish people prevailed. And we don't just celebrate that we are alive as a people, but we celebrate by continuing to act as moral and responsible human beings. So this week I have to share my award-winning, my family recipe, Pamantaschen. It comes from my mother, who I think got it from her mother, and it has been a big hit throughout the generations of our family, and I cannot wait to share it with you. So as we get ready for Purim, let us remember to do good always. And have a great week, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. So the first thing we have to do is make sure we have all of the ingredients. So I sent along a recipe, maybe you've printed it out or you have it on another screen, but I'm gonna go through them just in case you don't have it so we can all check to make sure we have the right things. We don't need very much. So the first thing that we need is one cup of butter, which usually means two sticks. And I had left my butter out on the counter. I actually have four sticks because we have half sticks. Well, don't open anything yet, okay? So two sticks of butter, we want it to be room temperature. If you just took your butter out of the fridge, then I want you to give it a few seconds in the microwave, like 30 seconds on 50% power. That's the trick with butter. If you put it in on half power, then you won't end up with melted Can I butter. Open them you just want it to be soft. So let's check our ingredients. The next thing is a cup of sugar. You also need two tablespoons of milk. Again, this can be any kind of milk. You need a teaspoon of vanilla, and you need about two and a half cups of flour. I use all-purpose flour. We need something to fill our hamantaschen with. So um, we have a few ingredients that are okay. our favorites, and Josh. later when it gets to the filling part, we're gonna ask you what fillings we you have. Brought marshmallows and favorite. chocolate oh, chips. Ella just gave away our secret ingredient, but we'll come back to that. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is to take my rolling pin and I'm gonna flour the rolling pin too. Okay. I'm gonna Mine's a non-stick rolling pin, but the flour is still helpful. Flour the rolling pin. Great, that is enough flour. Now we don't want too much flour. That's good. Um, I'm gonna stick my ball of dough right in the middle. I'm not You're just gonna have to press it down. And I'm doing it in every direction to just like use the rolling pin as a press. And then when it gets a little flatter, I'm gonna roll 
slowly because I don't want to crack the dough. I'm going to try to roll this out to about a quarter of an inch thick. You're going to push and turn. You're going to do all the way around the dough. Is my first topping choice is going to be, somebody said it, s'mores. So we just have some marshmallows and some chocolate chips, mm -hmm. but you cannot go wrong if you just use the chocolate chips. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So you put them in the middle. So you only need about a teaspoon size of filling for each one. If you put too much filling in Is the middle good? of your circle, it's not going to close. Is this good? Okay. So, yes. So that means that's probably like, I don't know eight chocolate chips or something, not very many. Um, 10 maybe in the middle of my circle. See if you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna- and If you want, you can eat some too. Yeah, we've already had our fair share of chocolate chips over here. So we're gonna fill each of our circles. What I like to do, if you wanna become a hamantashen making factory, which is what we turn into over here, is I lay like 20 circles out on the counter at once and then I fill them, and then I shape them all, and then you can put them all into the oven at once. Those are my Thank favorites. You're welcome. Okay, so to our like 10 chocolate chips, we're gonna put one marshmallow in there too, one or two marshmallows, because mm -hmm. we're going for s'mores. That one's tiny. Like this batch, so I think two marshmallows will work over two there. Two marshmallows. What you do for the first batch is set your timer for a minute less. Like set it for seven minutes and check on them, um, and then if it needs the extra minute, you can let it go. Um, you do want them to be like a golden brown. You want them to look like they got a little bit of a tan, but you don't want them to be too burnt. Okay, I like mine a little bit on the softer side and they will get a little bit harder once soft. they cool. So uh, there are a few different shaping techniques. I like to be able to see the, the filling. So I don't like for the hamantaschen to be all the way closed, but if you wanna make a complete closed triangle, that's the way some people like it. So I use both of my hands. I'm just gonna put this down. You're not gonna see my face, you're just gonna see my hands, okay? And I fold two of the sides up at once and then make the third with my thumbs. So I have a triangle here and then I pinch the edge. I like to pinch the edges closed. Some people fold them closed. I like to pinch them. I like to fold them. And you want to pinch them good? closed. That's pretty good, Ella. This is the one Ella made. I'm gonna just, you might need a grown up to do the pinching to make sure that all of the sides are closed. Um, with the marshmallow in it, okay? So it takes some playing with it to get the shape how you like it. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put mine on the pan. Um, and they're not going to expand too much like chocolate chip cookies. So you only need to put them an inch or, you know, two apart. Get as many on the pan as you can. Sweet as honey. Sweet as honey, sweet as honey on our tongue. Sweet as honey.